In a little over three decades, the BME housing sector has made significant contributions towards challenging racism in Britain. Not only has it been a provider of homes, but it has also succeeded in boosting the well-being of communities by investing in programmes as well as other interventions. We spoke to some of its leaders to get their reflections on the past and thoughts on the future of the sector. So we were born in the backdrop of 1981 riots. I think what it was, was uh, an explosion of all the frustration that existed at the time. You know, racism was rife, discrimination was, was everywhere, poverty, unemployment, inequality. I think people in the inner cities, black people, Asian people, actually felt powerless. Uh, and, you know, the only outlet they had was to take to the streets. I think that created a catalyst for like the, uh, mostly the Caribbean communities in the in mostly the inner city area to say, listen, we need to be a part, not just be a bystander, we need to be a part of what's happening in our cities and towns. Many of the founders faced that discrimination themselves and after the riots which would happen in all the major cities over the 80s, the government was keen to get BME people involved. That if they've got a stake in the community, and I'm being quite um, um, crass on this, you won't burn it down. Hence, the idea developed of creating BME housing, BME housing. And that's why we're at this 30 year. Most of us were created around about the same time, um, late 70s, early 80s. Since the early 1980s, more than 100 BME housing associations have been established. Today, more than 60 housing associations remain, managing over 65,000 homes concentrated in Greater London, Northern England and the Midlands. They have a combined asset value of around £2 billion. In the 80s, the government uh, decided, in, uh, as a response to some of the the lobbying that was going on around needs of black communities that decided through the housing corporation to start a program of increasing black leadership, black leadership. And at the same time, the housing corporation was introducing the, the black housing association strategy. I think the BME uh, sector, in terms of its achievements, and particularly when it first um, was set up when we first were, were grown, we were an absolute brilliant campaigning organisation. We were campaigning and uh, arguing against discrimination um, in our communities, not just in housing, in wider issues. And I think we actually got the um, not only the other housing associations but local authorities to actually take notice of the, of the issues around race um, that was occurring in the neighbourhoods and why it was so important to address the discrimination. Our view was that they would set us up in the beginning, you know, just to come on and put a plaster over uh, what was happening at the time, which were the riots and so forth. And then, um, you know, in a few years' time, they would just come and take us over again. It happened to a few but there's a significant number of us that are still around. For ourselves is we found that uh, predominantly the, the community that we house, which is South Asian, predominantly Bangladeshi, Pakistani community, uh, were under occupied, were occupying some of the poorer quality private sector housing uh, and quite often it was too small for their needs. So in view of that, we've been able to provide accommodation which suits the family size and the future needs and the aspirations of that community. Whereas the, the, the sort of other mainstream housing associations and local authority weren't fulfilling that need. People that come to us are coming from you know, a whole range of experiences. They've been in the mainstream sometimes and the mainstream hasn't worked for them. Our residents do trust us. There is that engagement, there is that trust amongst us. There's something I, I think about the way that we've maybe been able to um, draw people, to have the confidence to feel connected, to feel connected uh, within their community sometimes. That's what social housing landlords should be all about, that we break down some of the barriers and a home is the basis of how you can start that journey. Not only were we there to do business, which we did, but we actually enjoyed each other's company as well. Um, and that, I think, made a hell of a difference. 
which was always about more than just the bricks and mortar in the home. It was about self-help. It was about, you know, people, you know, fixing up the, you know, the co-ops or the short life accommodation. It wasn't just about people getting cheap accommodation. It was about giving people an opportunity to look after an asset, to develop skills, to understand how to repair it. Um, you know, people would go into the offices and volunteer and become skilled in different trades, which will then help them to move on um, to get employment. That was always part of it, and that has been brought into the way um, that a lot of housing associations are now operating. That's why, you know, associations like us exist. Um, because historically, you know, people from our communities haven't been able to access housing in the same way. The Race Disparity Audit highlighted how many inequalities still exist across British society. Leaders of the BME housing sector are keen to take action to boost the life chances of those from BME backgrounds. It is our job to make sure our organisations are run well and are, are healthy, but that is only one side of the coin. The other side is to uh, stay true to our purpose. You know, we've got to recognise that, you know, as, although we've achieved a great deal in the last 30 years, there is also a lot further to go. I suppose my uh, fear is that we're not promoting and we're not uh, developing our the future leaders of, of the BME, you know, the BME House and Association, so that's a big challenge for us going forward in the next 10 years. Um, Altair undertook uh, a major review of the housing association sector and looked at diversity in leadership. What we found was that the talent was there within BME organisations, within mainstream organisations, within BME communities. But that talent wasn't always getting through. There's a challenge for our sector leaders to go out and find and nurture that talent and bring it through so that we create a genuinely diverse sector for the future. I'm in the position where between myself and the BME landlords that I chair, we're able to, you know, do some good, hopefully outstanding things going forward, like the Leadership 2025, which is a sector issue, uh, we believe, that there are not enough leaders in the housing sector from BME communities that run organisations. So, what we want to do is to ensure that um, we support the talent that we know is out there. To say that we can be at the forefront of um, you know, collaboration and strategic partnerships going forward. And I think you know, the mainstream who um, have got much more assets would do well to kind of like, you know, partner with maybe smaller BME organisations to start breaking down some of these challenges. And, so if we continue to do these things, you know, and maintain all our KPIs and maintain good governance, we will be the top performing housing associations in this country. People have a choice to do what they wish to do with the authority that they've got. And if the Black Housing Association movement exists and there's a body, it can choose to carry on keeping its head down and just getting on with the business and meeting every now and then and maybe complaining but what it can choose to collectively ask the, ask the questions. I feel as if like it's a, a baby that's grown um, to a height that we didn't imagine when we first started. So in that sense we won. Um, but yeah, it's still not enough, we need more. So yeah, happy birthday and roll on the next 30, 50 years.